There are two artists, Bob and Dave. Both beginners at the same level dedicated to learning arts. They both practice rigorously for one whole year spending the same exact hours of work. At the end of that year, Bob gains enough experience to up his skills by 10 levels, and Dave by a shocking 50. Well, most of us in this example are Bob. I'm Bob. You're Bob. She's Bob. We're all Bob. Except Dave. Dave isn't Bob. So, how do we become like Dave? How do we level up 5 times faster like he did? Well, that's by learning the right way to practice efficiently. And to do that, we're gonna use a bit of science to understand why we practice inefficiently and how to fix that. You see, to improve in art, we need to learn and remember a huge amount of information such as the art fundamentals mixed with a lot of practice. However, with the subject being so complex and the whole world in itself, understanding and retaining everything that we practice quickly becomes a difficult task. I mean, most of us don't even remember what we ate for lunch a few days back, so how do we expect to retain all of the information we have to learn for art? Here's the good news. It's possible. I mean, think about it. We remember things we learned a few years back. That helps us understand that information is not learned in the same way, it's not stored in the same way. Now, this is where science comes. We have both short-term and long-term memory. Our goal is to send all what we learn to the long-term memory so that we can later retrieve it when creating artwork. To put it in a simplified and fun way, think of the short-term memory as a place in the brain that has a few slots to store data with a very limited space. Whenever we learn something, the information will occupy one of these slots. Now, if we keep on overloading our brains with more information, the data will get dumped to be replaced by new ones, rendering our efforts in practicing inefficient as most of it will be lost. So instead, we want to make sure that the majority of what we learn gets sent to the long-term memory. To do so, there are three things I want you to stop doing and five things I want you to start doing to start learning effectively. The first thing is getting rid of all of distractions and overloading of information when you are practicing and learning art-related stuff. So no more checking your phone, Facebook, Instagram, you get the point. The sole focus during a study session should be practicing art and nothing else. The second thing is to completely stop multitasking as there is research that shows that daily multitaskers are easily distracted and suffer from a poor attention span, hence being less productive and inefficient. The third thing is to stop practicing for long sessions without taking breaks in between. There have been estimates that on average the attention span of adults lasts between 10 to 20 minutes before it starts diminishing, which is insane. So taking a 2 to 5 minute break every 20 to 30 minutes will jumpstart your focus allowing you to benefit from longer hours of practice. Okay, let's start talking about some effective methods to commit information you learn to your long-term memory. I want you to start doing these five things. Deconstruction, recall, self-critique, quality sleep, and spaced repetition. To go over these five methods, let me use the example I gave you on Bob who got to level 10 after one year of practicing art, and Dave who got to level 50 in that same amount of time. So I'm gonna explain how each of them practice differently. For this example, Bob and Dave are both trying to learn how to draw faces. However, whatever I'm going to teach you right now will apply to anything else, including any other art medium such as sculpting. Bob spent every day drawing different faces using reference from Pinterest. He would look at the reference and draw what he sees, no more and no less. He kept drawing a bunch of different heads per day, and everyone he does occupies one of his short-term memory slots. Since Bob here has two of these slots, he constantly replaces what he learns with new information without ever properly storing his previous drawings in the long-term memory. This again is a very simplified way used to illustrate my point. That said, we can quickly see how this method is just not efficient. Most of what we're learning is getting mixed and lost, slowing down our growth as artists. So let's take Dave. Dave was smart enough to follow the five steps I just talked about. Deconstruction, recall, self-critique, quality sleep, and spaced repetition. Let's see how he applied all of these five steps. Just like Bob, Dave also drew a lot of faces. He, however, doesn't only rely on reference. He also consciously deconstructs what he sees either visually or on paper. This is to say that he is truly putting in the effort in learning how things actually work. For example, he tries to figure out the perspective of that head, how the head would be in geometric simple shapes, how the skull underneath would look like, the muscles, their names, their functions, etc. 
Dave then repeats the same head drawing without looking at reference to his best ability to remember what he just drew. This is called recall. He will then do some self-critique by comparing differences between his drawings and the reference to figure out what he forgot or did wrong. This right here is a very powerful way to practice, as truly understanding the subject at hand, repeating it through recall, then doing some self-critique will create a lot more impact to the information you're learning. By going through these steps, Dave is ensuring that whatever he practices is sustained for a longer period of time, by sending the information from his short-term memory to his long-term memory before it gets replaced by any other information. After a hard day of practice using these three steps for whatever he draws, he will get a good night's sleep which will help him properly retain any information he acquired. This now takes us to the last step, spaced repetition. You need to see the brain as a muscle, it needs maintenance. Repeating what you learned over and over again throughout the month and year will reinforce the information, help you better understand it, and also make it last for a longer period of time. So, Bob here, even after one year of drawing heads, still doesn't truly understand how to draw one. Dave, on the other hand, has a very good understanding of heads, he can now draw them better than Bob, both from reference and from imagination. And now Dave is 40 levels ahead of Bob. Sorry Bob, you didn't lack talent, you simply needed to watch this video. So let me ask you, are you a Bob or are you Dave? <laughs> let me know in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe to the vi subscribe to the channel, not the video. Give the video a like though and make sure to share it with your friends so uh, that you can help this channel out. And uh, before you go, know that the science that I talked about over here is a lot more complicated than reality. I just wanted to simplify things in a fun way for you guys to easily retain the information and then apply it to your daily practice routine with whatever kind of art you create. So uh, there are still a lot of things I can cover and a lot of different methods that we can you know, learn from science to improve our art. And uh, I've been really interested in the subject lately, you know, with psychology and, and how the brain works and all of that. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, if this video helped you out and you really enjoyed it, just make sure that you let me know in the comment section below so that I can create more of this type of video. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one. So let me ask you, okay, let, <clears throat> okay, let's start talking about some effective methods to commit information you learn to your long-term memory. Are you a Bob or are you Dave? How the brain works, all that kind of stuff. Mm. All right, so let's review some of the key points that I talked about throughout this video. So first of all, get rid of all of distractions. Just put your phone on airplane mode or do whatever you gotta do to get it done. Also stop multitasking in general, it's a bad idea. And stop overloading your brain with useless information. Now the things you wanna do when you're practicing is deconstruction, recall, self-critique, a five minute break every 25 minutes or so, that's gonna depend on the person. And then you wanna get a good night's sleep it's very important that you get one and you want to do spaced repetition. Everything is explained in the video. If you missed any of these points, just go back and watch it again. So let me ask you. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more awesome character sculpts and art related videos. You can also check out my store for full courses on character sculpting, texturing, materials, brushes and more. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, then you will definitely enjoy the next one.